We were so close to the finish line with this Jeep. You guys have seen this Jeep in the shop and we were almost there and then catastrophe struck and we get to start from square one. Let's take a look what happened, guys. This is the 1983 Jeep Wagoneer. You guys have seen the shop. You've seen several videos on it and along the way we've kind of gone through not a full restoration but kind of a minor restoration we we're going to put a good rebuilt engine the transmission had already been rebuilt do some minor upgrades here and there and the customer is going to take it and be very happy with it this has been a back burner project for quite a while and the customers totally okay with that we were oh so close to the finish line we had it running we were fighting with it a little bit and I'll describe a little bit about that here in a minute but actually had Danielson come over to finish up and do some final tuning with it and it all went down the toilet. The customer is so angry, but not at us. They're angry with what happened with the engine. It is very, very bad, guys. My mechanic's frustrated because at first he thought he damaged the engine. After we just did some discovery and digging around and found out it was not Danielson's fault at all. He did a very good job. The engine rebuilder did not. Now keep in mind guys, the customer had his engine rebuilt at a different shop. It was not rebuilt here. And it's really bad. Let's go over some of the things we have done to the Jeep and then we'll take a look at the carnage. So we'll start here in the interior. We've had the cluster out. You can see all the lenses have been replaced. These normally had like a cone-shaped lens inside of there and they usually fall down inside the, the cluster and get lost or they look really bad. But these have been, we refinished and put new lenses. Everything's up and going. We did bypass the amp meter because they are known very frequently to overload and catch fire and burn the Jeep to the ground customer said let's go ahead and disconnect that amp meter and leave it alone so we did we've also gone through a lot of the interior inside of the dash replaced relay switches and all kinds of things of that nature it does have an aftermarket radio in it the clock has been replaced and it is working the AC system as you see down below the bottom of the dash has been gone through with a new evaporator core expansion valve, all those things have been replaced and it was working really good before the engine failure. Whoa, wizard, we're in the back seat. Yeah, but we're not doing any of that funny stuff. We're oh. just looking at this customer's Jeep. Of course we are. And so we had low and upholstery made some carpets for the rear. They were really just destroyed pretty bad and he was able to find matching color and everything carpeting that works really well. Went together with the slats, cleaned them up. It looks very nice. It's got new speakers. Everything's cleaned up in the back. The headliner is very nice as well. Again, Lowen Upholstery did that for us here in Newton. It did a very, very good job. There are a lot of things that you can't see. There's wiring that's been redone. There's switches, relays, things inside like in the glass, the, the motor, the defrost, everything has been redone inside the tailgate. I really can't show you that now, but it has been redone. So the interior wise, everything is up to snuff. And like I said, we were almost there. It was, it was really close. So that's what we've done on the interior. The exterior didn't need anything really on this. We did clean up the, the rails and things and put them back on. There was no major damage to the body or anything. It does have some fairly decent tires on it. It didn't need a whole lot of suspension work or anything. But we've gone through and replaced some of the hinges. You can see a lot of the relays and things. So you can see we've had custom harnesses made here in the shop to run the fuel injection system. It is no longer carbureted. It was converted to an Edelbrock ProFlow 4. That would make it easier to start in the morning and he could take it up to altitude up in the mountains and not worry about carburetor jets and things not being correct. It does, does have a new wiper motor, lots of new hoses and lines and cables, all kinds of things have been replaced so that it could be reliable. But as you see, there's a gaping hole. There is no engine in there, but there was. You guys saw an engine in there and there is no longer. You just seen it's out been torn apart we took it 
all the way down to the block to figure out what in the world is going on. So, the Jeep itself is pretty much done. Everything's been ran, all the wiring's been ran, the interior is done, everything the customer wanted has been completed. But let's take a look at what happened to this engine. All along the process, there's been trouble to try to get this thing tuned right. I've looked at it, and I've had a other, few other people looked at it. We've been on the phone with Edelbrock, and it never would run just perfect. It was kind of rough, and some of the fuel ratios and things like that were constantly out of whack, and I thought maybe there's a vacuum leak, maybe something wasn't installed properly. But every time we would go to recheck everything that we've installed, it checked out beautiful. There's nothing wrong. And so we're trying this, trying that. Daniel's son sat over here with the little tablet that's actually used to tune the ProFlow 4. It comes with the kit. And he tried all kinds of different parameters. He has experience with these things. And he never could get it to do right. He could never get it to act right. Obviously putting engines in is not the problem. The tuning wasn't the problem. The fuel injection system wasn't the problem. All the aftermarket parts and things that the customer had us installed, what we thought were the problem, ended up not being a problem at all. There's nothing wrong with any of those items. Finally, Daniel's son was actually trying to do some final tuning and trying some other ideas, and the engine was running, and all of a sudden it started knocking, clacking really loud, and then it, it got so bad we just turned it off. They were like, what in the world just happened? And that's what I could just describe. Danielson thought he ruined the engine. He thought, I don't know what I just did on there. I thought, oh no, I, I ruined it. He was so distraught, he was almost in tears. I said, I don't know that it's your fault, Daniel. I don't think that it is. Let's go ahead and pull the valve covers. Let's pull the intake and kind of just get an idea, see what's going on here. What's making that noise? And the results that we found meant that we had to pull the motor. It's bad, guys. It's really, really bad. Shame on the builder. Shame on the builder that rebuilt this engine. Let's take a look. So here we have the short block, or just the empty block itself. This is the ProFlow 4 injection system along with the intake. And again, like I said, there was nothing wrong with this. So this will be going back on the engine when I have it rebuilt myself by Martin Machine. That's who I trust. The customer took it upon themselves to find their own shop and arranged to have it rebuilt at their own choice place. And unfortunately, I think that was a bad call. When we go back together with a good engine, it's going to be done by Martin Machine in Wichita, and it will be done right. And we can finally put the engine in and be done with this fiasco. Let me get this out of the way and I'll show you guys some damage. So as you can see, it's all taken apart. Here's one of the pistons out of it, and this one really doesn't have an issue. But you guys all know how an internal combustion engine works. The pistons go up and down. The camshaft turns in time with all of that. Moves all these lifters up and down to open and close the valves. And all of that was kind of working fine, but it was done very poorly. Take a look at this hole, guys. I can put my, any of my fingers through, almost my thumb, yeah. That's a hole right into the water jacket. Let's go take a look at some of the other carnage which caused this hole to happen. So as we dug deeper, we pulled the lifters out. They should look fairly flat on the bottom. And they should be, when they're soaked with oil, they should be stiff. This one is not. It's squishy. This one is stiff. I can't even squeeze it at all. And look at this one, guys. It looks like it's half of it's been eaten off. See the, see the difference? So after we saw the lifter issue, I said go ahead and pull the timing cover off. Let's pull the camshaft out and see what happened here. So as we see, here's a lobe on the cam and it's got a nice sharp point to it. That's the way it should look. That's where they all should look. But take a look at this one as I spin it around. It was rubbed all the way down. Probably a quarter of that lobe is gone. 
and that was the one that was rubbing on this one. So what we had is a lobe fail, and it actually took out a lifter with it. Either the lifter or the lobe failed, one of the two. I don't know if there was proper break-in oil or things put in on it. I'm not sure what happened there, but with that cylinder, that's the one that actually we saw that has the hole in the block. It got so bad right there that as the lifter came up, it actually, the push rod came off the lifter and with the spring tension from the valve spring, it slammed the lifter like a hammer down into that very thin casting on the cooling jacket. It's paper thin, guys. And just wham, punched a hole and just filled the valley with coolant. All of that because I'm not sure why. I don't, I don't know the exact reason why it failed this way. I just know it did fail. As we did some digging around in the rest of the engine, let me move this cam out of the way. We can see the bearings on all of these connecting rods. They look pretty rough. They look pretty scuffed up. Look at this one here. It's got like, you can see on the outside, it's rings. I don't know if the tolerances were wrong or there was no assembly lube used. I'm not sure what happened with this, but it's, it's not good. So the last and final thing that we found that made me decide we're done with this engine. All the other rods, and including this one, they're not loose, but they do have a nice, easy move to them. They shouldn't be floppy loose in the piston, but they should be able to be moved fairly easy. But there was this one here. Watch this, guys. I have to really force it. I mean, you can't... That's a very crappy build. All of these things are adding up, and I'm just like, we're done with this engine. We can't use the block again. And some of these parts we may be able to reuse if they get remachined and rebuilt. New bearings, get the wrist pins done, do everything proper. But we definitely can't use the block again. The block, unfortunately, is toast. Ooh, ooh, did we just get a new anchor for our boat? Yes. We could, you, you can lift that and throw it overboard. I'm not <laughs> lifting that. I don't think so, but it would be a good purpose for it. Yeah, it, it, that engine, is, as far as the block, it definitely is now a boat anchor. It's unusable. It'll fill the valley with coolant and ruin the rest of the engine. So, we'll hop outside real quick, and we have, just happened to have laying around, you guys seen a video on it, an engine block for this thing. Let's go take a look. Wait a minute. Not this one. Yes, do you guys remember the video with the rat infested Jeep that was literally to the top of the engine bay with rat nest and rat poop? Ew! Yes, that Jeep. This one. The engine turns over freely by hand. I don't care about the rest. I don't care if the wires are chewed and all that other stuff. I just want the block. And it, like I said, it turns over freely by hand. My engine builder at Martin Machine can work with that. Go through the journals, go through the cylinders, everything, and fully make it happy again. So, luckily we just have this one sitting out here. It's actually kind of a godsend. It's very nice. Okay, who cleaned it out? I think Junior Mac cleaned it out. Poor guy. Yeah, I feel sorry for him. But at least we have one here. So, let's head back into the shop. So, yes, this is sickening. This is the kind of things that happen that make you want to throw up. When I gave this information to the customer, I could tell he was about to throw up. I did give him the idea, I said, how about we take this back to the builder and let them make good on it? He said, hell no. He said, I don't want them touching any of my Jeep parts or my engine. He says, I will gladly void my own warranty. I don't even want to talk to those people. I'm so mad with them. He says, I might strangle them. I said, yeah, I, I understand, I get that. I said, well, based on the fact that you want nothing to do with claiming warranty on this engine build, I will take the block out of the rat jeep, these parts and heads and things that are still good, and take them to my guy, and we will get together and get a good engine for you. Because I've used him many, many, many times. I've never had this crap happen. So, these things happen in a shop. 
these are the kind of things that if you don't know how to handle the situations, they can get out of hand. I handled it well. The customer's happy. Even though this isn't a happy occasion, the customer is happy that how it's being handled. So there will be more saga to this Jeep, unfortunately. It'll be here longer. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to pull this catastrophic failure out of this Jeep, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And just as I'm doing this video now, there's even more cars coming in. There's more videos coming, guys. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.